What's up y'all, my name's Annie and I run the travel account Average Girl Does Cool Things. Did you know that on average, Americans take only 11 days off a year? Like we are the worst when it comes to taking our paid time off. In fact, travel website Expedia just ran a survey and they found that only 65% of Americans intend to take all of the paid time off that's allotted to them each year. That's pretty abysmal. We treat time away from work as a guilty pleasure when really it's essential to our well-being. Now I travel over 30% of the year, both domestically and internationally. And I'm not a travel influencer, I'm not a digital nomad. I have a demanding full-time corporate job. But over the years, I've developed strategies to take more time off, to travel the world, and to still show up and perform at my job. In this video, we're talking about overcoming your money obstacles. Because I want you to take all the vacation time that you can and go create a life that you love. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, y'all, let's talk about obstacle number one to traveling more, and that is, where do I find the money? Because even with a full-time job, finding the money to travel more can be a huge blocker to taking more trips. Obviously, like you wanna have enough money that you can take care of future self. You have to be able to pay your bills, like your mortgage, your rent. And if you're like me, you still wanna feel like you're getting a good deal when you do travel. So in this part of the video, I am going to give you 11 tips to help you free up more cash or find more resources so you can travel more. So tip number one is to prioritize your spending. Notice I didn't say budget. Budgets are all well and good, but budgets can drive a scarcity mindset. When you think about budgets, do you think about abundance or restriction? I'm gonna guess it's restriction. So instead of thinking about all the places that you need to cut back so you have more money, instead think about where you wanna prioritize your dollars. You wanna spend lavishly on the things that are important to you, like traveling, but cut ruthlessly on the things that aren't. Personally, for me, that looks like taking a bunch of trips every year and spending $30,000 a year on travel, but I drive a 20-year-old car that like every day it starts up is a good day. The car is not a priority to me, but taking that trip to Indonesia is. Tip number two is to sign up for all of the rewards programs. If you're not already capitalizing on your existing travel by being a member of your airline and hotel rewards programs, then you need to get on it ASAP. And don't just sign up with your frequent favorites, sign up with everybody. Two reasons for that. One, kind of like credit, you wanna be earning years of status with these different programs. So like start now, even if you don't have a foreseeable trip with one of those in the future. Second, because those vendors that maybe you're not using may have a transfer arrangement with the vendor that you are using, which leads me to tip number three. Tip number three is to look for transfer opportunities. As there's more competition in the travel space, these rewards programs have become more and more robust. So travel providers are teaming up with others in order to keep your loyalty. For example, you can now earn Marriott Bonvoy points by shopping at Starbucks. Then you can transfer your Marriott Bonvoy points to United Airlines to book a flight. You might never stay in a Marriott hotel, but you can still earn points for Marriott Bonvoy. And then if you are a United Gold Status member, that gold status transfers over to Marriott and you can get Marriott Bonvoy Gold Status. Again, even if you've never stayed in a Marriott hotel. So using these travel transfer partners is a great way to stretch your dollars. Tip number four is to be open to flexible travel. If your goal is to travel more, then being flexible in when you travel and where you travel to is a super cost-effective way to go. So instead of like picking a destination and a time that you can travel, you find a time that you can go and then you look for the cheapest flight to anywhere. Or vice versa, you pick like where you wanna go or a couple places that you wanna go and then you look for the cheapest time to go without being wedded to the time. It's a bit of rolling the dice with your travel plans and you know, for a planner, it's a little difficult to let go, but it can be an amazing way to have an unexpected adventure and save some money. Tip number five is to bring in some extra income. I say, the gig economy is great for this, guys. It has never been easier to start up a side hustle and bring in a little bit of extra cash. So you can advertise your own services on something like Fiverr or Upwork, or you can get into dog sitting on Rover, which is what I do. You can do food delivery through DoorDash, or you can sell some extra clothes on Poshmark. Now, one caveat here I wanna make sure that I mention is that a side gig is not the same as starting a business. 
If extra cash is your goal, starting a business might get you there in a couple of years, but starting like a whole business is a lot of work. You're looking for a side gig that is going to make you extra cash and get you paid right now. Tip number six is to make sure that you're maximizing what you're already spending. So if you're not already gathering points on everyday purchases, it is time to start. Pick a rewards credit card that matches your current day-to-day -day spending and rewards you accordingly. So for example, if you like to eat out, make sure you pick a card that gives you extra points on dining. If you fly a lot, make sure that you pick a card that is rewarding you multiple points when you book air tickets. Just be aware of the annual fee of a card and make sure that you are getting enough in points and perks to offset that annual fee. And you know, don't carry debt because carrying debt on a credit card in order to get points makes no financial sense whatsoever. Tip number seven is to make sure you're putting your dollars to work. This should go without saying, but don't leave your extra dollars sitting in a checking account earning no interest. Find a high yield saving account and make sure that your dollars are working for you. Visit a site like bankrate.com or nerdwallet.com so that you can compare all the current offers on high yield savings account and pick one that is best for you. Keep that money working towards our next trip. Tip number eight is to book in the off season. Booking in the off season or in the shoulder season is a great way to get discounted rates on places that are typically really expensive. It can also be easier to get reservations and it's great for the local economy because it's bringing dollars into the area at a time when tourism revenue is typically lower. Just be aware that not all restaurants or attractions may be open during that time, so be sure to check before you go anywhere. Tip number nine is to get your financial house in order. Travel is amazing and eye-opening, but not if it's putting you in the poorhouse and making you dependent on your full-time job just to stay afloat. Make sure your financial house is in order before you start spending big on trips. That means that you are contributing to your retirement account, you have a fully funded emergency savings, and little to no credit card debt. Because trust me, nothing will suck the fun out of your travel faster than money stress. Tip number 10 is to hit the discount travel sites. So here are some of my favorite discount travel sites. I love going.com for flight deals, google.com slash flights for flight deals, point.me for travel rewards planning, kayak.com to comparison shop deals on hotels and cars, and hotels.com for great hotel deals. If you want a list of these, I've got a full ultimate guide to taking more PTO, and I'll put the link in the description below. Tip number 11, last tip here, is to avoid unexpected travel fees. Once you've booked a trip, beware the sneaky fees that can eat into your travel budget. Review your credit card policy on foreign transaction fees, exchange fees, and service fees. And just make sure that you're using a card that doesn't penalize you for using it abroad. All right, those are 11 tips on overcoming the money obstacle to traveling more with a full-time job. I hope that was helpful. You can download the full guide at the link below in the description. And if you have any tips to share with this community on taking more PTO, I'd love to hear them. Please leave them in the comments below. Until next time, go create a life you love. Bye.